Good morning, Money.net viewers. It's Thursday and it's March 30th. It's Steve Flanagan here with you to discuss FX. You can hit me up on the Scout chat or on my Twitter handle, sflanagan1979, with any questions you might have or follow-ups to our show today. As always, I wish to educate the viewers with some of the insights and tools that I've learned over my 40 plus years of trading in the FX markets. It's my hope that we can all come away with a better understanding of what drives and moves the currency markets each and every day. Trading FX is exciting, never a dull moment. It's continuous Sunday afternoon in New York till Friday at 5 p.m. in New York close to seven and a half trillion dollars trades each and every day. I'm pumped. You know, having sat at the number one liquidity provider seat in FX, month end is big, quarter end is the big show. Currency trading today is influenced by inflation, interest rates, and geopolitics. Those are our major market movers. But today, I want to take you under the hood. I want to open up and explain to you, should you not be aware, of what a quarter end close means in the FX market. It's a huge event. Do you know that it's all decided within five minutes? It's called a WMR fix. It happens around 11 a.m., two and a half minutes prior, two and a half minutes after 11 a.m. What happens? It's a big rebalancing portfolio event. And what does that mean? It means that there are sales or purchases of assets within a portfolio to maintain a target ratio. We have a portfolio. You could be a corporate, a hedge fund, a pension fund, an insurance company, an investor. Let's just say for argument's sake, the portfolio is worth $10. You have a ratio that you have already decided upon that $5 of that 10 will go to growth stocks. $2.51.50 will go to income producing stocks, and $2.50 will go to bonds. Now, the world is your oyster. As a fund manager, pension manager, corporate, you have no longer just domestic exposure, you have global exposure. Well, let's throw in what topics we've been discussing for the last several weeks. Mexico offers 11%. Brazil offers 13.75%. Let's talk about the ECB at 3.5%. Australia, 36 Sterling, 4.25%. You get the idea. You've got money all over the world to keep the ratio of your portfolio strategy in place, not to mention that you've got in money in equities as well. So as these values up and down over the quarter, the one thing that goes to the center Let's call it the fulcrum of the seesaw, which maintains your portfolio balance, is the currency rate. Because with the currency rate, I know exactly where my portfolio sits as far as evaluation. I then begin to see, well, which side has gone off based on the ratio that I have prescribed to my portfolio. And it's the currency rate that then has to be adjust. That section or portion of the portfolio now needs to be adjusted. So we're not talking about billions. We're talking multiple billions go through 
in this five minute window, buying and selling. One portfolio could be a buyer, one could be a seller. It all negates and all comes to fruition through that window. And let me tell you, having been in that seat as a liquidity provider, providing a bid and an offer, it is an exceptional seat and a great insight that I hope to be providing to you right now. Anyway, that's what happens in quarter end, and that'll happen tomorrow at 11 o'clock. And I hope to be on the scout chat at that point in time, making comments and insights that perhaps can benefit you. Remember, trading currencies is exciting. But let's share screens and let's talk about where we are today. So let's jump to our first currency, the euro dollar. We can see we've had a nice break. Of course, correlations are beginning to come back into play. What is a correlation? A correlation simply is when one thing happens, another thing usually happens. When correlations break down, such as I highlighted in the MEX yen carry trade, oh, it's called a roach motel. You get in, but you can't get out. But in general, these tend to trend. Euro dollar or the dollar in general is coming off, equities are going up. And as people begin to see equities going up, they're more inclined to jump into the euro dollar. Euro dollar presently at 109.11. We talked on Tuesday about a great location point coming into quarter end of 108.65. And we were trading at 108.55. I recommended a short position based on the 108.65. However, we talked about having a stop loss to get long euros at 108.75. Had you done that, well, you're sitting in right now in about a 40-point profit. The high so far has been around 109.26, but should we break this 109.30.40, which looks like there is enough momentum coming back in as our stochastics begin to come back up to an over, overbought position, but still have plenty of room to move, I would be targeting in the highs of 110.30 that we've seen in 2023. Now, that's significant because should we break a 110, 2030 level, which is the high this year, it's going to open up a lot of what we refer to as stop loss buying, considering for three months we have sat under that level. So something to watch, 109, 30, 40 resistance, a break of which opens up 110, 30 and beyond at least a test of the high, a break of 110, 30 opens up a significantly higher move. Let's move into sterling. Well, I'm going to have to say the big beaten creed have had this one right because they've been talking long sterling. And as you can see, since this whole banking issue started, for sterling has been moving in a relatively strong fashion. We are now above the 122.60.70 zone that we had talked about. Presently, we're at 123.70. But now we're facing 124, 30, 50. Why is that significant? I've highlighted this. If I jump to a weekly chart and begin to go back in time, we can see how this level of congestion and trading has played in uh, support levels, resistant levels, breaking, again, congestion zones and a break congestion zones and a break. And here we are again on several attempts up to this level. Will it break this time? Well, there certainly seems to be quite a bit of underlying momentum to push us higher. Stochastics are overbought, but we are turning again to the upside, which is usually a last gasp type of situation. Right here, I have a January close of 123.18, significantly below me, but sterling upside looks like a minimum, a test of the 124.30.40 zone. Into dollar yen, my favorite. Dollar yen has had a strong move here off the lows. Now, if you were with us Tuesday, I talked about dollar yen had a low 
of under 130 on the systemic risk issue. Dollar yen is the one currency. Should systemic risk, risk ever come back into the uh, market's um, focus, dollar yen is the one, sell dollar yen, because the yen is the safe haven currency. But after we have this period, and again, we have to always say, if this period of systemic risk is over, which it appears that the central banks have taken action around the globe, Credit Suisse has been sold, we've had the um, Fed, Treasury, and FDIC stepping into the regional bank issue here in the States, if this is over, which we made as a precondition, dollar yen to return to a 131.10.60 safe zone, then I would see a risk on environment. Well, it worked between Tuesday and here, dollar yen now at 132.75. If we get above this 132.80 and close the week above, it's going to open up a sharp move to 135. And that's a risk on environment. And I would look for equities, which is exactly what's happening. Equities are trading up as well. Watch the dollar yen. It often gives us very good correlations to what other markets are going to do. I expect dollar yen to trade and break 132.80, trade up to a high of 134.50 to 135 before consolidating back into a 131 and a half, 133 and a half level. And that's going to be a very good safe zone, which should support a risk on environment throughout other markets. The stochastics are turning sharply. You're in the fiscal year close. Tomorrow's the close. But that's pretty much a uh, has been now because much of the Japanese fiscal year close has already been decided. They take an average of the dollar yen closing rate through the first three, three and a half, four weeks of March. The last week is just window dressing and it really doesn't come into play. So that's the dollar yen. A couple other currencies I want to highlight, Aussie dollar is lagging this move here with the dollar coming off. Aussie dollar could be one to be looking to buy here. Presently at 66.95, I'm looking for a test here of 67.85 and perhaps a break there up to the 70, the figure handle. Aussie could be lagging here in this move. Dollar index, of course, is doing just what the euro dollar is telling us. The dollar index is trading back off presently at 102.17. Very strong support in the 101.30.50 zone. So be careful getting away on that one. Um, the dollar mix. This is one that we've talked about. If we get into a period of consolidation, then dollar mex is the one to look at at 11% interest rate. It's a very actively traded market. It's probably sometimes the fourth, fifth, or sixth most traded currency in the marketplace. So it has plenty of liquidity to jump in and out. But you can see what's happened as this market has been consolidating over this week. Look at the, the dollar mex just dropping. I would be looking for a, a replay into the 1740 zone, which are the lows. And that's another 60 big figures away from present. Now, on Tuesday, we talked about a great opportunity that was lagging the market because if stability is returning, South African RAND has interest rates at 7.25. Okay, it's not a huge interest rate, but South African RAND on Tuesday was trading above 18.10, 18.15, presently down at 17.87. We've had a sharp move below, and I would be looking for a retest of 1,700. That's 86 big figures to still go here. If consolidation is in play, if the systemic risk issue is now getting into our uh, rearview mirror. So that's a couple of things in which to look at. As I talked about, here is that chart that I wanted to bring up earlier, talking about what quarter end means. Here you have a plan of where you want bonds and stocks, and it's a complete, the fulcrum is the FX market and the exchange rate. Over the course of a month or a quarter, one side begins to, to move on the seesaw. The fulcrum, again, is the foreign exchange rate. You now need to add more risk to stocks in this case and less risk to bonds. Now, if we take that out into a large situation where we have 
multinational global aspects, you can understand why certain things have to take place in that five minute window. That's an insight that I hope that you've gained something from, a little bit of knowledge. That takes place tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Wanna have some fun watching? Just bring up your dollar yen uh, and your euro dollar exchange rate, maybe sterling as way. Well. I focus on the G3 because if we take just those three currency pairs, that's 70 to 75, sometimes 80% of the entire foreign exchange market volume in a given day. Now, seven and a half trillion dollars trades in one day. So that's why I focus on those three currencies to really gain that insight. That's it for today. That's a good wrap, I think, and a good insight into what to expect into quarter end. Let's keep the currency space hot. See you here next Tuesday morning at the same time. Please join me as we're beginning to get more comfort level on our broadcast here to the money.net uh, customers and followers. It's hopefully something that you're gaining a little bit of insights, how currencies can often lead the way and show you the way. This is Steve Flanagan out. See you next week.